and collision repair shops are facing an increasing amount of complexity with modern vehicles. And one of the complexities we face is the electrical systems that are involved. So it's very important that we do scanning processes on these vehicles. So this video today is a complement to the video I made recently on OBD and CAN bus systems. So let's get into what some of the terminology is. But remember, we always have to keep the OEM procedures in mind and research those before we begin any repairs. So pre-scan. Many vehicles manufacturers would like the body shops to do a pre-scan on the vehicles before they're repaired. Scanning a vehicle before the repair uh, determines the overall condition of the vehicle's complex electrical system. It can help us find faults before we get too far into the repair, and some of these can be very costly. Programming. Some electric uh, control modules in the vehicles may need to be replaced, and after they're replaced, they may need to be programmed. Some of these modules may even come blank, meaning there's no software installed, so the software may have to be taken off of the old module and installed on the new one, or OEM software may be required to install new software onto these uh, modules. ADAS, you've probably heard the term, if you haven't, you've been hiding under a rock. So ADAS is Advanced Driver System Systems. Uh, these are semi-autonomous or fully autonomous features or referred to as automation, so self-driving vehicles. Calibration, after a repair or replacement, uh, ADAS equipment such as sensors, cameras, radars, etc. may need to be calibrated to function safely. This is very important. So if you are servicing a vehicle, you need to know if there's any ADAS equipment that you're dealing with and will that equipment need to be programmed or calibrated afterwards. Calibration in some cases is simple, in some areas it may need to go to the dealership. Be aware, if you do need to send a vehicle to the dealership or a third party for calibration, if the vehicle is not calibrated, it is not safe to be on the road. So for example, if you go ahead and do a repair on a vehicle, and the front sensor, uh, for example, in the vehicle has been repaired or replaced or maybe damaged still, and you send someone on the road to drive. There's a chance that the ADAS system may try to take over the driving at some point and not fully understand the distance between vehicles and could actually cause a collision. So it's important that if you are sending a vehicle out, have it towed. Post scan. So it's the final scanning of the vehicle after all repairs, assembly, programming, calibrations have been completed to ensure that all systems are functioning correctly. Uh, in some instances, you may do some programming and calibration uh, simultaneously with the post scan. But essentially, we have to do a post scan to make sure everything's healthy when we're done. Now, it's not just a matter of making sure that we've cleared problems that came up uh, during uh, when the vehicle came in, but there's chances are that we could have caused problems during the repair that also need to be addressed. For example, do you ever disconnect something in the vehicle in the body shop? Send it from the body stall to the paint department and there's items that are disconnected. Driving or moving that vehicle, those disconnected items could be problematic for these systems. Uh, let's talk about the CEL, that's the check engine light. This light, along with other MILs, M-I-L, uh, which are malfunction indicator lamps. They are lamps that light up if there's a fault found in an electrical system. And these lights light up if there's a code present somewhere in that system. But it's important to note that not all codes will illuminate a lamp. Therefore, the old assumption that a scan's only needed if a light is illuminated is completely incorrect. Other, a few other things to note. Scanning is always essential. Clarity code does not fix the problem. If there's a problem that still exists, the code will come back. And not only that, the code itself may not be a code directly to the problem that you're having. The code could be more related to a symptom of a bigger problem. Therefore, the codes must be used as a part of a greater diagnostic process. Let's go back to ADAS for a moment and have a look at the six levels of driving automation as determined by the Society of Automotive Engineers. Levels 0, 1, and 2 in the blue are systems that will assist the driver, therefore a driver is still needed and is in control of the vehicle. 
These systems offer warnings, momentary assistance with steering or brake acceleration, and they include features such as auto braking, blind spot monitoring, adaptive cruise control, lane centering, uh, and other items uh, related to those. When we get into levels three, four, and five, these vehicles are able to fully drive themselves and a driver may or may not be necessary. In level three, a driver is still required uh, to be in control at uh, certain times in specific conditions. Level four and five, the vehicles are able to fully drive themselves. So these are fully automated or self-driving vehicles and they will have very specific features that uh, help with that. Now let's have a quick look at some examples of items we might find in an ADAS equipped vehicle. What we're seeing here is a front facing camera. We're looking at it from the outside of the windshield. The next image is going to show the same sensor from the inside. These are important to note as if there's a windshield replacement, these will need to be recalibrated after the windshield is replaced. Another concern with these items as well is the fact that the windshield itself may alter the way that these sensors read or detect an image or item. Therefore, it's important to use an OEM windshield or certified windshield. Right now, Kappa has just completed a new certification program for these windshields. We'll see how this program unfolds. Behind the large emblem on the grill of this Mazda is another front-facing sensor. Many of these front-facing sensors use sonar technology to help determine the distance of another object from the vehicle. Many vehicles are utilizing sensors like this today. It's important to note or make sure that these sensors are not damaged or covered up by anything. Uh, using aftermarket parts or accessories may hinder the use of these sensors, therefore the vehicle could be considered unsafe. Many vehicles today utilize electric power steering, which has many advantages over hydraulic power steering, which include the ability of tuning for feel, as well as adjusting the amount of assist between low and high speed driving. The purpose of the electric power steering with an ADAS system is to allow the ADAS system to control the steering of the vehicle. So if a vehicle is self-driving or able to assist in some areas such as parking, the vehicle is able to control this motor and turn the steering. If you do perform a wheel alignment on a vehicle that does have this type of setup, you have to be aware that there is a steering angle sensor inside of there so that the motor and the computer system understands at which position the steering wheel is located. Even some vehicles without electric power steering may have a steering angle sensor, so be aware of that. Let's take a moment and have a look at some scan tools. In the bottom left hand corner we have what's called a code reader and that is a very simple basic tool that's very fast and easy to use. Typically these are used by consumers to quickly check for codes in a vehicle. These are limited in that they will only check very basic OBD2 codes from typically the ECM only. On the right in the bottom corner is a launch scan tool. This particular scan tool has a lot of capability. It can scan many different systems in the vehicle. It also has the ability to do some programming as well. Uh, this particular scan tool is not uh, one of Launch's more high-end units, so it does have some limitations. In the very back, you'll see the case. That houses an Air Pro Diagnostics uh, scan tool. This tool is quite unique in the sense that it is not actually a scan tool. It is a communication device that allows for a third party to do remote diagnostics or scanning for us. So essentially uh, it's referred to as a pass-through device, meaning that a third party company will do the scanning using OEM software at a remote location. The advantage to this is this tool will be able to read all of the modules in the vehicle as it is the OEM software that's doing the work whereas other items such as aftermarket tools may have limitations as to what they can read. So why don't we take these tools for a test drive and see what happens. This is a 2018 Dodge Ram three quarter ton that we have in the shop. And here's a photo of it before we washed it. This vehicle was rolled on its roof. So let's see what kind of codes we come up with. So we plugged the little code reader into this truck to see what we could come up with. And it found two codes in the system. The launch tool was plugged in and it scanned many systems in the vehicle and being much more comprehensive, being able to check more modules than the code reader, it found 15 codes in the vehicle. 
In the background, you'll see a printout, the piece of paper. That is from the scan we did with the Air Pro tool. The Air Pro is even more comprehensive as it uses the OEM software and discovered 46 codes in the vehicle. So this tool, the Air Pro that is, was able to get access to every single module in the vehicle and find all the unique codes for the problems. After doing the scan on that RAM, there's a few things I do want to follow up with. We used three different tools and got three different results with that scanning process. We used that cheaper code reader that had some limitations. Then we used that launch tool, which is a mid-level or mid-tier scan tool, but did a pretty decent job, but still had a lot of limitations. And then we went to that Air Pro uh, tool, which then was fully comprehensive and got everything because it was utilizing that OEM software to do the scan. So that one was a very good scan. Now, I don't want to take anything away from Launch. Launch makes a multitude of products. And this particular tool is on their lower to mid-range area in their product line. They have some higher end scan tools that would have done a much more comprehensive job on scanning that RAM. So again, apples to oranges comparison to that Air Pro. So do keep that in mind. But one thing I am uh, going to stress and say that's very important here, you should be using a scan tool in your body shop to do all your pre and post scans. If you are purchasing a scan tool, I recommend that you go out and find a scan tool that is OE approved. So find a scan tool that is going to meet the requirements of the manufacturers, uh, the vehicles that you're going to be working on in your shop. Um, so with that, the OE equipment and software is your best choice. So if you're in a dealership, you're going to have that. If you're outside of a dealership, using a pass-through tool, like the Air Pro, for example, is an excellent option because it still util utilizes that OEM software. Uh, thirdly, if you're going to go with an aftermarket product like the Launch, for example, then you want to make sure that you're using one of their higher-end products, keeping it updated, and finding one of the products that does have OEM approvals. And there are many companies that make these. So, of course, Launch is a really popular one in the collision shop. Uh, Snap-on, Mac, Matco has their own tools. Um, there's Bosch, for example, OTC. Again, many different manufacturers of those tools out there. Uh, let's go back a little bit too and talk about the calibration. When is a calibration required? So we talked about that briefly earlier. When we talked about the windshield, we were talking about how if you replace a windshield that has that sensor in the windshield, you must replace, uh, or sorry, when you're replacing that windshield, you must also have the recalibration performed. That's true. Same with the wheel alignment. We're talking about that steering angle sensor. But what about other repairs in the collision shop on a vehicle? So there are other sensors throughout the vehicle, by the front bumper, by the rear bumper, even in the doors. The doors often have cameras or sensors in the mirrors or elsewhere in the vehicle. If we're removing and installing these, do you need to do a calibration on that? If you're replacing it, do you need to do a calibration? And that's going to be vehicle dependent, uh, so you need to make sure you're doing that OEM research. So make sure you spend the time doing that so that you can ensure you have a safe quality repair. So again, best practice in my mind is to always do a pre-scan and follow that up at the end of the job with a post-scan. Another thing to be included in best practice is your 3D measuring. Uh, don't forget to measure the vehicles. Even if the vehicles don't look like they have structural damage, it's a good idea to double check that by doing some three-dimensional measuring on the vehicle. So what I recommend as best practice is in that blueprinting stage at the beginning of the repair, do your pre-scan and do your 3D measuring. That will set the vehicle up for a safe quality repair. Thank you for watching. Uh, if you haven't had an opportunity, please watch my other video on OBD systems as well as CAN bus systems. It goes hand in hand with this video. I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, please leave some comments below. Thank you.